was to be their year and the exodus began by bus, by car and by plane to the Catalan city of Barcelona and a meeting with Moscow Dynamo. It's estimated as many as 30,000 made the trip, hoping it would prove third time lucky for Rangers in the European Cup Winners' Cup. No fewer than 30 aircraft left Glasgow Airport alone. Bank loans had been taken out and insurance policies cashed. The Ibrox Legions were convinced that their club would win a European trophy for the first time. What are you going to do over there? We're going to show that it's safe over there anyway. You? We're going to drink plenty on it, I much. A lot of people are taking the view that Wednesday night's match in Barcelona is really a make-or-break game for Rangers. Do you think it's as serious or as important as that? I wouldn't say it was make-or-break, Arthur. I would, say, I would say it's a very, very important game for us. Uh, any final uh, European trophy is an important game for any club. People are also saying that Moscow Dynamo are a fairly young side that are relatively inexperienced at this level of football and that Rangers will probably start favourites to win. Do you think you would rather be the underdogs or would you like to be favourites going out? Well, uh, I'm not really worried about being favourites. Uh, most of them don't, don't bother me really. It's, I'm more worried about the way we can play. Mm -hmm. If we play the way we, we can play, I'm not worried about who's favourites or who's underdogs. John, which of your European Cup or Cup matches so far do you think Rangers have played the best football? Well, I think uh, the last game, last uh, round against Bayern was, must be one of their best. But we've had hard, hard games in all the rounds of this Cup. It's been a hard, hard season for us in this tournament and uh, I think we've done very well to get to the final. Because you yourself have been fighting hard against this ankle injury. I know you've been getting treatment right up until the very last minute. Uh, how do you feel about playing with an ankle that might perhaps give you a wee bit of trouble? Well, I've, I've had a few of these but, uh, after the years I've played now. But uh, my biggest problem has been that the season actually finished a couple of weeks back and there's not been any games apart from the two friendly games we've played. And uh, the grounds were a bit hard and I only played in half an hour in both of them. Uh, but it served a purpose and I'm looking forward to the game Wednesday. I hope nobody feels like that. Let me ask you this finally, John. How do you and the players feel about it? How, how, how confident are you of bringing the European Cup winners cup back to Scotland for the first time? Well, we're very confident. We can hope we can do it for not only Rangers fans but for Scotland. Uh, it's our third time in this final. hope it's a good omen for us. <laughs>
Support in the Barcelona Stadium that night. Well, I've never seen this film before, actually. Not actually so I'll be that, very yeah. uh, anxious to see it, and mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember a lot about the start of the start, uh, coming up the tunnel or anything. What, but what, well, what, were you very nervous? I was nervous. I, I was emotionally uh, gone at the time because coming to the game, seeing so many Rangers supporters, and desperately, desperately to wanting win. us to win it, to win. And uh, well, did that make things worse, actually? Well, I think I think uh, basically we felt that we had to win this day. No, and I suppose it's inspiration you get from supporters like that. Well, to get that kind of support in a match away from home, it's tremendous. This is the Rangers team, and I, I suppose at that stage the big surprise was Colin Jackson off playing. Colin Jackson uh, called off the day before. Well, John, we can look at this game now. Memorable night for Rangers. Very powerful looking team and off we go. There's Sabo, Joseph Sabo goes down heavily. John Gregg behind him. Willie Johnston and the whistle goes. It's a free kick. And John Gregg no doubt be looking after Zabo tonight. That's number two Basilov. To take this free kick. There's Ellen McDonald in very quickly to Willie Johnston. Johnston slow moving forward there. Dave Smith at the back. Russians retreating. Colin Steen. And Johnson can't keep that in. The game starting rather slowly. Dolmasov was up there. Tommy McLean. And a great shot and save. Certainly much more like it from Rangers. Here it comes again. Tommy McLean just getting in there. And the goalkeeper. Almost caught unawares. Johnston just missing that. Willie Matheson. Johnston. John Gregg. Gregg. Good tackle by Gregg. Colin Steen. Steen going in and impeded by the referee. And nevertheless, Rangers picking up the pace of the game now. This is what we want to see from them. I think they've let the Russians play around in a kind of academic way far too long. And I'm a claim to take this. Good one to that far side. It's touched away there by Zikov. Evrajin. Jard and Den. No whistle. Dave Smith has it. Towards Colin Steen. Here's Steen, it's a goal! It's a goal by Steen, what a goal! What a goal by Steen! And on come the fans! Oh, they'll have to get off! Here it comes! What a goal by Steen, he followed that up! And whoop! In it goes! And away comes Dolbonasov! Beautiful play by the centre half! Jukov. Dave Spears considering a corner and the Russians were really attacking that time. You can see how the Rangers defense was practically cut out in the middle here. Open goal and Smith slightly hesitating. Cleared well by Sandy Jardin, McDonald, Tommy McLean. Bring that down neatly. Where goes McLean? And a Colin Steen brought down free kick and he's right over beside the range of supporters who would look hostile at the Russians as they even sneeze at Steen.
McLean with it. The neat ball to Derek Johnston. Steen. I'll pick on John Gregg. Here's Dave Smith. Smith going up. It's a good ball to go. It's a goal by Willie Johnston. It's a goal by Johnston, and this time the Rangers supporters are coming on, thankfully. But there it is, watch it, number two this time. The Russian defense cut out in the middle. Willie Johnston's up there, and he's flicking the goalkeeper completely deceived. Rangers 2-0 up. 39 minutes gone. <laughs> Greg. John Gregg again to Steen. Steen going in. Back to Derek Johnston, to Tommy McLean. McLean with it now. There's a neat one, and Steen's almost up to that. A corner though. Tommy McLean with it. The Rangers emblem at the back. Craig Johnson trying to get up, looked away towards Dabo. Dabo there downfield, there's Sandy Jardin. This is a very dangerous looking Djokovic breaking and Peter McCloy, outside light of region, nowhere near it. We're in extra time in this hand. Dave Smith. McLean beautifully to Derek Johnston. To Johnston and just well. well. John, in that uh, particular game, Derek Johnson showed his versatility because he came in almost his third choice there, didn't he? Well, he was only a boy at the time. Most people looked upon him as a centre forward. He was actually the third choice centre half that year because of the injury to Ronnie McKinnon in Portugal and Colin Jackson. Go to Rangers. Back he goes to Dave Smith. On to Jardin. To Khan. Rangers will be quite content to keep possession of the ball in the second half. As long as that score remains. Steen and here's Willie Johnston with a chance. And it's a goal. It's a goal by Johnston. Right out of the blue. Rangers three up. Incredibly, three up, the start of the second half. Here it comes though, watch how the Russian defence was absolutely cut out. Down towards Johnston and he comes in at the back. They look towards the linesman. They picked his spot, looked as if he might have hit it too late, but no, the goalkeeper slow going down. And there we are, Rangers three nothing up. Three and a quarter minutes in to be precise. By our watch, that is. And Sabo kicking off, and Moscow Dynamo have a real fight on their hands now. Now, Willie Johnson. And we've seen something of the best of Johnson tonight. Rangers have waited all season for it. And he's got the legs of that man and being obstructed. No, the referee waving play on. Songs rising up from all around the Barcelona Stadium. 99% of it populated by Rangers supporters, or 99% of the people here, Rangers supporters. Here's Matheson, and that's a bad one. The great chance for the Russians. And that's a goal, number 13 has scored. Estrakov, the substitute, had a bad mistake by Matheson. And no wonder John Gregg's having a word with them. Watch this now. Rangers playing it too cocky. Jardin and the Russians reduce the leeway. And 13 taking up good position and it's 3-1. Russians maneuvering around. They like these set positions. Khan to Greg. Just cut off there by Vesilov. Neat ball, there's Willie Matheson, and McCoy, a great save. And for Sabo coming up, now Alec McDonald. 
and Willie Johnson just offside and Rangers playing only two men or three men up front content to hold off as we see this again no we don't we're back to play we're back with the play Vasilov to Domatov a bad pass at the end. Russians playing up well though. Just Colin Steen. Steen with it. He needs some support. He has nobody. Still Steen. To McLean. Oh, it's just over. Great play by Colin Steen. And there was nobody with them. Tommy McLean came up at the last, as you'll see. He was looking for somebody, and there it is. McLean doing well to take that first time. Well, as I was saying, Rangers have been in European football since 1956. A bit nothing to show for it. Now 3-1 up. Here's Tommy McLean trying to cover up there, and it's a corner kick. And the Rangers defenders were allowing that player to go through, and it just as well as McLean went with him. That is number seven, Baraccini. Nine minutes left. Nine minutes left, that's a good ball. And a great save, and it's away now. It's a, just a, well, I thought it was in. We'll get the action replay now. Rangers living dangerously there. Looked in. Nobody there for it. And it's just taken away. There's Sabo. Out to Zhikov. No, it's Dolmatov. And easily mopped up by Dave Smith. Now Dave Smith for Rangers. There's a beautiful ball to Steen. And a great save by the keeper. Steen could have clinched it then. Steen again. Tremendous guts he has, slipping there though. Now Alec McDonald. Willie Johnson. Still Willie Johnson. And Wild with a shot. Four minutes to go. Four minutes left. Willie Johnson looking tired. Indeed, the whole Rangers team after a hectic and barren season for them, looking tired. The Rangers supporters sensing now victory with four minutes to go. The Rangers supporters beginning to converge near the edge of the touchline. But here's a chance for the Russians. Sandy Jardin, then it was almost an own goal. Great save by McCloy. Look at this one. Here it goes again. Jardin taking the ball with his wrong foot, you see. Should have taken it. With his left, and McCloy right on the spot. There's Alec McDonald. Now number 10, Mahayakov. And it's a goal! It's a great goal! By Dynamo, I think it was. By Dekini, I'm not sure. Here it is again, the Rangers defense sleeping there. That was number 10, Mahoyakov, who scored. Dynamo 2, Rangers 3. A nerve-wracking situation for Rangers now. Could they let this slip? Victory was almost there. Russians. And there it is. The final whistle's gone. Rangers have won the European Cup Winners' Cup. And onto the field go thousands and more thousands. Rangers have won and I've never seen anything like it. The players, the players will be suffocating in there. There we are. Look at them and Rangers players somewhere are in the middle of all that. A tremendous victory for them. The first time in many, many years of fighting. They've got a European trophy. The European Cup Winners Cup. Well, John, how's that for your first viewing? Well, 
thrilled. Uh, really excited about watching it again now. Uh, I can't remember half of that game. It's, uh, it seems such a long time ago. Good to relive it, though. Oh, marvellous. Mm. Marvellous. How did you get out of that crowd at the end? You didn't actually have the cup, did you? No. That was the one anticlimax uh, of the whole game, I felt. Uh, I, was, I was presented the cup in a small room, uh, which to me, after all the work that had been put into it and uh, playing the teams we had played, to, give, to be given the cup in a small room, to me, was a, a big anticlimax to it. Now, it, it does occur to me again that you were quite fortunate to play in that game. I'd suffered uh, about two months previous, uh, six weeks previous, with a, an ankle injury, a stress fracture outside of my right foot. Uh, I had a problem right up to the day of the match. In fact, the morning of the match, I wasn't confident about playing the game at all because... Uh, so you could tell supporters now that they, you, they might well have played that game without you? Well, uh, the manager, Willie Waddle, after the game told me he had no intentions of uh, leaving me out. Uh, but he kidded me on that I had to prove to the press and to the public that I was fit to play in the match. Mm. And the Monday and Tuesday prior to the game, uh, I had to train with the rest of the lads. And the Wednesday morning when I, when I got up at my bed, I had this uh, problem. Now, it, I, again, when you look back on it, Rangers 3 nothing up. Did you think the cup virtually was won? I thought the game was over at 3 nothing because I didn't feel that any team that particular year could give this, the side we had three goals of a start and beat us. And you almost blew it, though. We almost blew it because uh, we got a bit tired. Probably I was more tired than anybody because I had hardly trained at all before the game. And we, I felt, I felt uh, when the second goal went in, I was glad that there was only about three or four minutes to go. Billy, in general, what did these triumphs mean to Scottish football? Well, I think for us as, as players, actually, they, they really fulfilled ambitions. That uh, Our ambitions in those days, I don't speak for myself, I speak for a whole lot of players, were to go and enjoy ourselves playing football and to give value. Um, I think nowadays there are too many side issues at, uh, th 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 at stake now and really for us the only important thing was to go and play in games and go and enjoy games and really f from home bred teams it was a magnificent uh, time for Scottish football. Did it add to a prestige John? Well I, I felt it did. Uh, Rangers and Celtic have always been world known for the, the names in the game uh, but we had to win something like this to, to establish ourselves. Uh, it was okay being known throughout Europe, but we had to actually win the tournament to, it, to be established. I think time actually lends to your achievement, because one begins to wonder, could it possibly happen again? Billy, briefly. Well, I think it can always happen, Archie, but uh, it would be difficult to see teams having the strength of pool that those two had then. John? Well, you we just need to look at this uh, next couple of weeks. We have two sides in the quarter-final. Right. Uh, it doesn't mean to say Rangers and Celtic have to win it. Dunbar Dean and yeah. Dean could win. I'm, I'm hopeful. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. Well, we hope we've rekindled some very pleasant... Cup and onto the field go thousands upon thousands. Rangers have won and I've never seen anything like it. The players, the players will be suffocating in there. There we are. Look at them and Rangers players somewhere are in the middle of all that. The great disappointment for Rangers in the midst of the wild celebrations was that pitch invasion by deliriously happy fans. The Spanish police misjudged the mood and found themselves in a battle with the over-exuberant supporters. The club would later be banned for two years from European competition, later reduced to one after a typically eloquent Waddle appeal. 
from a personal point of view, it didn't mean so much to me. Uh, the fact that it was our third European final, I think the supporters deserved it. I think the club deserved it. And as far as I was concerned, I mean, I can't even remember the last time I looked at that thing. Uh, the fact that it's in black and white in the history books is enough for me. Very proud to have captain that side, very proud of the players I played with. Um, and very pleased at the end of the day that the club and the supporters got a European trophy. Due to the mayhem on the pitch, the Rangers fans missed out on seeing the trophy presented. John Gregg was called out to receive the cup in a corridor with no ceremony whatsoever. Not that it mattered when he returned to the happy chaos of the Rangers dressing room. I think it was a bigger disappointment for the supporters because they, they wanted to see it. We'd wait long enough. Um, I'm, I was just, I was, I'm just a captain. I'm, I'm as a person that they'd love and players. They had to go and get it. But basically you're getting it for thousands and thousands of people. I think that was my first um, hangover. Um, I came in, we got up in the morning, we sat at a pool, and it was absolutely scorching. And we were up quite high. Uh, maybe wind, breeze, brilliant, no problem. We saw on the plane, I said to the doctor, I said, doctor, I'm really struggling. I've got, you know, I said, you probably got a hangover, Alec. I said, well, I think there's a fair chance that we get back to Ibrox, usual, into the airport, absolutely poor. His arrival added a new dimension to the attack. His passing was remarkably accurate, and when that was combined with Derek Johnson striking the... One! See you. 
to their heroes. The Rangers team that famous night, McCloy, Jardin and Matheson, Greg, Derek Johnston and Smith, McLean and Conn, Steen, McDonald and Willie Johnston. John, how are you feeling at this particular moment having got the cup back now at last to Scotland? Delighted. Can't wait to get time, boss. How do you feel now today about the, you know, the, the end of the match last night, the astonishing scenes that we saw at, yeah, at well, the stadium? I think the sports got a little bit excited, but uh, well, they've waited a long time. And, uh, I hope they're not getting too much trouble because of it. Now John, at one point you were three goals up and looked very comfortable. All of a sudden you were 3-2 ahead and time running out fast. Did you think the game was slipping away from you in the closing moments of the match? Well, I was a bit worried, but uh, I, was, I was glad to hear the final whistle. Now that, that injury of yours that you've been getting treatment for, were you really 100% fit last night, quite honestly? Well, I wouldn't let you say. I'll leave, I'll leave others to say that. <laughs> Colin, you haven't scored two more important goals for a long, long time. Which of the two was the, was the vital one? Do you think the first one or the one you got later on? <laughs> oh, the scored one. <laughs> what game was I at? <laughs> you know, that's right. Just testing after. That's right. <laughs> you missed the game after, didn't you? What about lunch two Oh, fantastic. Come at the right time, just before half time, just after half time. I think I really killed them. A lot of the lads, I think, look as if they were tiring a wee bit towards the end of the match. I think that's fair to comment. I think we put a lot of effort in the game and they brought two fresh men on, you know, and I think that made a difference for them. Cause were we you were surprised, do you think, at the, at the quality of the two substitutes who came on, Colin? I was surprised at the quality of number 13. I thought he was a very good player. Yeah, scored the first mm, goal. Yeah. Gary yeah. Johnson, this was a tough game for you, your first, your first European Cup final. How do you feel in that first 15 minutes? I thought you played particularly well, actually. How are you feeling? Yeah, oh, great. The, the inside left I was playing against, he was a slow reader of the ball, you know, mm -hmm. I just got in front of him all the time, and that was... By the time the team coach had reached Ibrox, thousands of fans had gathered to salute the team, who proudly paraded the European Cup Winners' Cup around the stadium. The supporters stood, sang and cheered in the rain. No one wanted to go home that night. Put 